Hi, welcome back. I'm excited for today's video. The other day when I installed the Phoenix 4000 electric tongue jack, I opened the battery compartment of my Airstream base camp for the first time and got an unpleasant surprise. Here's an image. All right, the first thing you'll notice is the batteries are wedged into that tray. Second is that the box designed to hold them in place is broken. Third, it just doesn't look right. So we're going to fix that. We'll start by removing the table. There's just six screws. Remove those six screws, zip, zip, zip. Lift the table, put it back by the back bed. Two screws, take the battery box cover off, easy. Pull the cushions off, the cover for the battery box. Now, there is a tough screw in that leftmost column. In the back left corner of that, you can't get to it with a drill or an impact driver. You're going to need an old-fashioned Phillips screwdriver. The other tricky one is this black bracket you see above that vent tube in the upper left of the battery box. That, I used a, my drill driver with an extension and got it out fairly easily. But this one here, you're going to need a thin-handled Phillips screwdriver and then just be patient. Turn it an eighth of an inch at a time, whatever, or eighth of a turn at a time, whatever you can get. Okay, I pulled the batteries out, pulled the tray out. That drain tube, in my case, was mostly severed. Uh, not sure what's up with that, but it was not going to drain anything anyway. It would have just spilled onto the floor. Pull the box out and look at this. That panel should be mounted to the wall. That's where your solar controller is, the shunt and other electronics. And for some inexplicable reason, it was held in place with those screws you see there on the left. Maybe an eighth of an inch penetrating into that wall. That's inexcusable. That panel didn't make it out of the Airstream parking lot before it fell to the ground. Now you don't want to use too long a screw or you're going to end up penetrating your shower. But that wall is, I believe, three quarters of an inch thick. So I used a uh, screw of an appropriate, appropriate length. It's a little bit of a battle here because that exterior wall is curved. So you don't have a good angle on that screw. But I eventually get it. All right, now I'm outside. This is the left, or this is just under the battery box. I'm going to remove this vent cover and then pull what's left of this drain tube out. When you're done, you just put that back in place. All right, now I'm test fitting the batteries. I want to add a third Battleborn battery, so I need to see if they'll fit. And it looks like they're going to fit perfectly, like that box was actually made for it. That is a much cleaner look than what we had before. I'm kind of excited about that. All right, now we need something to hold those in place. So I'm going to use this aluminum angle stock. It's one inch by one inch by one eighth inch thick. And I'm cutting it with a Diablo thin metal blade on my jigsaw and it cut through it just splendidly. You could use a hacksaw though as well. All right, mark where that angle goes. Then drill some holes in there for the light bolts. But it helps if you get your bit in there tight. Helps even more if you get your bit in there centered. All right, now it's tight and centered. You'll notice I'm wobbling that drill around a little bit. That's because I'm using a quarter inch lag bolt and drilling a quarter inch hole. I don't want those lag bolts to bite into the aluminum. I want them to pass through cleanly and suck that aluminum tight down against the floor. All right, mark that. Drill two pilot holes, get two lag bolts started. Now finish them off, two more pilot holes, two more leg bolts, zip, zip, tighten them down, we're good. Now that blue plastic thing is just a 90 degree angle. If I hold it tight against the one that I bolted in place and hold the new one 
tight against it, I'll have a perfect 90 degree angle, which is what you want to hold the batteries in place. All right, I stuck those straps in there, but we're going to go over that a little bit later. Now, you'll notice that when I fit these the first time, I had the batteries in a vertical position. Here I'm putting them in a horizontal position. That's not really what I want. This is a mistake that I'll have to correct down the road. Call it a brain fart, just not paying attention, worried about filming, worried about something else, thinking about something else, and doing this project. Oh well, it's an easy fix. But we do have to address this hole. So that white board there is actually a five gallon paint stir stick that I got from Lowe's or Home Depot. And those are just two uh, drywall screws that I'm using to hold it in place. Now it doesn't have to do anything other than keep this insulation plug that I'm going to insert from falling through. Now that is just a three quarter inch high density foam that I got at uh, Home Depot. Next I'm going to cover this with an aluminum disc. Now I bought a sheet of aluminum from my local Airstream dealer that was 12 inches by 3 feet. I used my jigsaw with that thin metal cutting blade to cut that out. It might be overkill. Nobody's ever going to walk on that or push on it, but it just seemed appropriate. So with that secure, I'm going to plug the vent hole out of out the wall. Now you can see it's insulated all around there, so I'm not worried about that. I cut another disc from that same sheet of aluminum and now I'm going to rivet that in place. If you've never done a rivet, don't be intimidated. It's really simple. You drill an appropriate size hole, stick the rivet through, slide the riveting tool onto the rivet, squeeze the handle, bam, it's done. Now if you own an Airstream, you should know how to do rivets, so this could be good practice. All right, now these nylon webbing straps will hold the battery in place, keep it from jumping up and down. And that tool that I just took out of the frame is a hole punch. And I punched a hole through that strap. I just folded it the end over, so I punched a hole through two layers. Now I will thread it underneath the, or feed it underneath that aluminum stock, keep it folded over on itself, and grab a, a lag screw, or lag bolt, Here's the lag bolt. Maybe, maybe. Here's the lag bolt. Get it through both layers. Then push it through the aluminum into the final layer underneath the aluminum. Tighten it down, you're good. All right, a little Hollywood magic. You see that pink insulation that appeared there while you, you blinked? Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but right now I'm cutting a piece of carpet to put in there. More as a vibration pad, but it will also add a little insulative value between the cold floor and the batteries. All right, now we'll put the batteries in, and they fit nice and snug. Look at that. Kind of almost had to wedge that in there, and that's what you want. You want them to be. You want it to be a tight fit. Get the second one in. I'm not going to show you me putting the third one in, but. I pulled, put the third one in, stretched the uh, straps over the top, and now I'm snugging that aluminum L-stock uh, so that I can pull those straps tight. Now I poked holes through, folded them over and poked holes through them, and then I strategically stuck that drill in there so the camera would focus on it rather than what I'm doing, because this is the super secret part of the video. Just kidding. Here we go. All right, got the screws through there. I'm using a screw with a washer on this side. Get that tight, but not completely tight. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold it over, put the screw through both layers, push it through the uh, hole in the aluminum into the webbing underneath, and tighten that down. Get that snug. Now. I will tighten that leg bolt in the middle to pull that bracket down snug against the floor. All right, a final torque on these screws and the batteries are secure. Now it's time to put this side of the battery box in. Now you'll notice 
I cut a hole in that. That is for ventilation. I don't have a screen to put in there, but I will get one. And when I come into this project again, I will install that screen. But getting this wall back in place is a little bit of a mission. I had to use every extension that I have for my drill driver uh, to get it long enough to reach those screws uh, through the battery. But you see, I got it. Now I'm going to slip that pink insulation in there. It's super simple. It just slides between the battery and the wall. That's all it does. It just sits there. No adhesive, no nothing. I had a couple of thin strips that I cut so that they could follow the contour of the bend of that exterior wall just past the batteries. Next, we put the seat in for the dinette. I'm starting with the uh, two hardest screws. Now that one and the black bracket at the upper left corner of the battery box. It's a little bit difficult. It's not bad. If you have a long enough extension for your drill or drill driver, it's pretty easy. The leftmost screw on this column, that's a completely different matter. That one, it takes a little bit of doing to get that into place. Um, probably more doing than it's worth, frankly. But I did prevail and felt good about the victory when it was done. And it's still going. I'm still not victorious, but I'm getting closer and closer. Uh, it's kind of hard. All right, let's get this buttoned up. Three screws in each of these black brackets. Zip, zip, zip. Four screws in that wood splice between the two boards. Three more screws in this black bracket. And then three screws in each of these columns. Put the battery box cover back in, put the cushions back in place. Now, I didn't film installing these cables. There just wasn't a good angle to do it, but it's just a bolt and a nut through the uh, battery post. Bend those cables accordingly and shazam, that is done. Battery box cover goes back on, two screws, two trim covers, and it's done. Voila. All right, put the table back in, six screws. I find it's best to get one started, locate the other screw holes, and then zip, zip, zip. Piece of cake. Get them each started and go around. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Easy peasy. All right, just like that, it's done. Happy day. I'm really thrilled with the way this came out. A couple of tips. If you're going to do this project, budget at least five hours to get it done. You might be a little quicker, but five hours is a reasonable time frame. Assuming you have everything you need in place and everything you don't out of the way. That's the biggest issue. All right, now, nothing about that battery box is perfect yet. It took a big step forward today, but there's a lot of wires in there and there's a lot of excess wire. It looks, oh, it looks like a disaster. So in a future video, I'm going to add two additional solar panels to my roof, two 170 watt panels, which will necessitate changing out the MPPT. When I do that, I'm going to address all the excess wire in that battery box and try to clean it up. If you've ever seen a breaker panel without the protective shield on it, where you can actually see the, where the wires go into the breakers, you'll notice that a good electrician runs all the wires straight. They come straight down out of the top. They curve into the breakers at the same angle. They're all level. They're all parallel. It's a nice organized deal. And you can see everything. It makes it much more serviceable. And that's what I want to do in that battery box. So if you haven't already, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like. Or better yet, share it with your friends. All right, I look forward to seeing you next time on Dreamstreaming.